Welcome back, Drop Frame. Sorry uh, about the longer break. Buying a house is just such a fucking pain in the ass. God damn it. Yeah, we're really close hey, buddy. to each other in the summer life. Anyways. <laughs> Let's uh, all get cold. <laughs> yeah. No, it's just how the summer life works out. We're all, we're so close. <laughs> yeah. No, I'll stay, I'll stay in my corner. Uh, Zeke, you're on, you got to deal is with that. Me. Are we getting it? I can't see it. Never. Base it the wrong way. No. No. Stop <laughs> it. No. With the hand Stop. up. <laughs> Uh, I'm not a cheap date. I love green screens. <laughs> Take out dinner first. They're fun. Anyways, uh, man, it's always fun to talk esports, even if you guys don't have that much dad in there. It's always good. Well, here I'll say I'll say it on our side. It's always fun to listen esports. It's fun to listen to esports on people that know the industry. It's not just like fans of esports. It's people that know the side you never see, and that's one of the reasons that like I really meant what I said at the end before we went on break. It's really cool to hear the other side of it. You're never going to watch esports and hear something like, yeah, we all are in the same building and I go out and have a smoke at 11 and get to talk to the other guys. Like, that's the kind of stuff you never get to see. Right. So that was that was really interesting. Well, fun. I didn't and know I, they, I, they live like that. I liken it to uh, watching a show about like space or physics or dark matter, like shit I have no clue about. But watching it is so fascinating be for that reason, because you are learning as you're going, you know, as you're listening. So if it just, if I have a resting board face, it's, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. For me, it's always, it's, uh, it's, it's the idea of like what could have been. Cause like, I think if I would have kept going down it, I would have been in a similar position or, or maybe not, who knows what would have happened, but, uh, it would have been an interesting world had I had continued on in esports. That's for sure. Drop frames probably wouldn't, wouldn't have been a thing. RP channels on Twitch though. So, well, that's the thing. Like, role play wouldn't exist. Drop frames wouldn't exist. I think I made the right decision, but it's definitely like, well, maybe the grass is greener on the other side. You never know. You never know what. Kind I gotta of say though, man. You know, it was it was really interesting talking to Semler and talking about making the right decision. Like, being in a situation where you're always having to have that kind of second glance at your colleagues, like that is that is an interesting way to live your life. That oh, was yeah. I I didn't realize it was quite. Like it took Semler actually saying that to make me realize that's his whole industry. Like you, you never know if there's yep. going to be that guy that's going to undercut you. That's not quite as good as you, but isn't asking for nearly as much as you. So that he's going to get or, taken instead of, or he's better and he's not asking for as much. Right? That's the scary part. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I can like, I can speak to a little bit of that doing like the hosting gigs for Twitch and stuff. Yeah. Whenever we get someone new and they come on and they start hosting and they're really good, like you're. Obviously, if you're a good person, you're happy that they're a part of the team and that they're doing well. But there's a little part of you going like, oh, shit, are, is this person going to take my job? Yeah. You know, like, are they going to ask this person to do the gigs uh, before me now because they're so good? Yeah. You know, so that I is, kind of understand that a little bit. That is a different kind of persistent stress. It was it was interesting to hear that point of view, for sure. Yeah, it, it's the equivalent of the sub loss for casters, right? It's like sort it, of, it's the yeah. job loss. Uh when I worked in esports, I was I I had the gig at MLG where similar has it Blizzard where I was contracted with I wasn't contracted I was under an actual like salary with MLG so I kind of had the good life there, but the other side of that was that I was a gatekeeper for other casters. I didn't like that. I I was part of the decision on like who's going to cast the finals, who are we going to bring to like I was oh. not a fan of that because at the same time I was also a caster. So it created this animosity of like, well, why the fuck is JP casting? He's not that good compared to X, blah, 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 blah. So wait a second. Your position was to pick people to do things and you were part of the pool. Yes. Right. That's why it was a little weird. <laughs> <laughs> that is like, that is, that yeah. is a recipe for bad vibes. It's My a God. little weird. Yeah, it was. Uh, well, it harkens back to the days of when, uh, you know why baseball manager or baseball, the coaches in the dugout, they wear the uniform. Yeah. They're the only coaches in in any sport that actually wears the uniform that. because it goes back to the days of player man player slash managers, yeah. where they would be also a player, but they would pick who would be on the you know uh, you know on the squad for the day. Yeah, yeah, and eventually, co, it became the the idea that I removed myself from casting, became more of a producer role because of like it got. There was a lot of drama <laughs> that would happen from that I can very only thing. Imagine, dude. Yeah, yeah. It's, I can't. Uh, I bet. I bet every time you put your name in there, somebody said something. Yeah, not to me, but definitely to others. Uh, I didn't have like final say on that. It was definitely just like, "What's your opinion?" It was like, "Oh, well, these guys are looking pretty good." Okay, 
Thanks for your opinion. Anyways, <laughs> that's mm-hmm. kind of what it, it wasn't like. I choose you. Um, <laughs> anyways, that's that's all esports stuff. We'll we'll talk about that another day. Uh, we got thirty minutes. I kind of just want to talk about Subnautica for thirty minutes, but we got to we got to bring Zeke in here too. So Zeke, how's Persona? Hey, <laughs> hey, JP. <laughs> I played, I played four, four hours of Persona. Yeah. I played four hours of Persona yesterday. I know, I know. That's what I was gonna say. You guys can I'm talk. Basically, about a master at this point. <laughs> I'm a professional Persona player, okay. so we can talk. Oh, and let me tell you, I know I I didn't have to watch, and I got the fucking play by play in my oh, chat. Yeah. The Co News great. Network was in full effect. <laughs> Oh, they totally None. were there like, oh, Ko just did this. Oh, Ko's chat was doing this. Oh, Ko is, I was like, I don't need God, I hate that. on what fucking Ko Carnage is doing. That's Thanks, I, though. I, I'll be real blunt. I love the fact that the three of us have this crossover between our communities. I hate the fact that I know every fucking thing that's happening on everyone's <laughs> channel at the same time yep. that it fucking that happens while I'm streaming. No, and it's not just you guys. These guys you, said this, but he has updates on J. Yeah. Yeah. No, it happens the across the board. JPNN on his side. Of course, the leader of the JPNN <laughs> would be saying this. Yeah. The JP News Network, which yeah. is a small van that travels to me <laughs> and Zeke's chat and lets us know everything going yeah. on in JP. No, I know. It, like, I hate that about this. Just our, in, JP yeah. just got a new unique drop in POE and helped his build yeah. by 14 DPS. I love News it. at 11. Next up on MSNB Zeke, <laughs> we've got. <laughs> Oh my god. So we've got CNN. We've got I like MSNB Zeke. That's fucking great. I don't know what the I don't know. JPNN, what, dude. J- JPNN, JPNN. Okay. I guess I'll JPNN, just that. It's like a Japanese network. So apparently JPNN is the JP News Network. It's perfect. Great. We can't, we that can't. works. That's perfect. <laughs> That's flawless. Anyways, uh you went to you went to Tokyo. Are you staying co? Are you are you in Tokyo for good? Oh okay. Tokyo, Japan, let's, let's have a let's have a serious discussion here. Okay, persona. So when I when I saw Persona, I I watched other streamers play it. I saw a lot of high school drama. I remember vividly the day that I tuned into Bike Man's stream and he was playing Persona on the third or fourth day that it released. And he was just literally, it was nonstop between this guy and this girl talking about this this other person that they were talking to and, the, and that that person said something about this girl. And I remember watching this game and being like, I want nothing to do with this. Like, I, I this is just high school drama. I want nothing to do with this game, and uh, and I and I and, and I didn't. I didn't for forever. Um, Damn. So then, as you guys know, I played Xenoblade, and the thing about Xenoblade <laughs> is I knew it was going to be too anime for me, but I decided I was going to focus on the stuff I did like, right? And we'll go from there. So after I actually completed Xenoblade, which I did as of this week, we oh, finished right. Xenoblade. You beat it. Okay, we got to talk yeah, about that after this. Yeah, we beat Xenoblade we'll after almost then, just... forty hours. I said, you know what? I'm going to give this Persona Five thing a try. And I'm going to approach it with an open mind, and I'm going to see what it's like, even though it's clearly a little outside my comfort zone. I played this game for four hours. This game has incredible music, coming from Xenoblade, incredible voice acting, um, a relatively engaging story. Although I have to say, I've played this game four hours. I feel like I've barely started it. Like, they, they have half explained pretty much everything until this point. I still don't quite understand what's going on. I feel like four hours in, I'm still playing the tutorial. And I can't get it to go away. I don't tease. No, wait, that's not there. That is there. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but I ha- here's the thing. Here's the thing. Um, this game has showed me something that I always kind of thought in the back of my mind, but it took Persona 5 to show me. And what that is is that very good to excellent voice acting is an incredibly immersive thing in a game. And when you have voice acting where it's like every time they get emotional or every time they get loud, you can hear that in their voice and it sounds exactly like you think that character would say it. Considering I just played Xenoblade, where it was like every time Rex yelled, it was just like, oh God, here we go again. (laughs) And then the first time I hear this blonde guy yell, I literally go, thank you, Rex. This is how you do it. Right. Like I said, like it, it was, it's, it's the, 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 uh, the dichotomy between p- not so great voice acting and really good voice acting. It, it's becomes, it's become very noticeable in Persona 5. And um, I have to admit that that's really grabbed me a lot more than I was planning. Um, don't get me wrong. I liked 
95% of the voice acting in Xenoblade. It, it really wasn't that bad. But any time the main character got like agitated or angry, it's like he forgot everything he knew about voice acting. It's really unfortunate. It really actually is, is a pre pretty big hindrance to the game. But in this game, it, 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 it's very clear that they didn't really cross that. Not only that, but you know, like I said, I'm only four hours in, so I'm still kind of learning the world. I'm, I'm pretty interested in where it's going. I'm interested in the whole persona thing. The palace thing hasn't really been explained yet. The shadow thing yeah, hasn't really been explained yet. You're not but in the game yet. That, I, I feel like no, you I'm, haven't exactly, even... I barely yeah. started it. But what, what I found is it's made me really want to like know more. Like I'm very interested. I'm playing this game tomorrow afternoon. I want to know more. You know, when I'm done with Subnautica, I'm moving it to the morning streams. I'm considering doing all day persona streams. I just kind of want to see where it's going. Um, just because again, it's very unique. There's not a lot like it. And thankfully for me, there's not nearly, it, the, the focus is not where I thought it was. For some reason, I thought the focus on this, of this game was really, and it might be, keep in mind, I'm four hours in. I really thought the focus of this game was going to be like 90% high school drama and then like 10% interesting story and side stuff. Yeah. But it turns out what I played so far, it's more like 80% crazy side world and side stuff and like 20 percent high school drama well, they, and i'm okay with that ratio they lay it on pretty that thick in the beginning yeah they, they yeah. lay it on pretty thick so, in the beginning to get you interested in it but yeah yeah so as of now i'm i'm interested um i'm looking forward to playing it tomorrow i can't really say much more of it because again i i feel like i've barely started playing it um and yeah i'm i'm pleasantly surprised as as to what i've played so far so yeah we'll i'm just goes. i'm I keep uh, just hearkening back because like dude, I'm like 180 hours in or something like that, and it only the only I mean there's so many reasons you can attribute to how why why my playthrough took way longer than anybody else's like I'm I'm already 50 hours past I think Dan's gaming I think he finished at like 130 or something like that I think so like yeah. I'm already 50 hours past that um and there's many a myriad of reasons uh why my playthrough is taking so long um but. 100 and 179 hours ago i was i watched this scene and it's i fucking forgot that like that one of the character like some of the characters like they start off with not their names yeah so you were talking you were talking to vulgar boy and i was like oh shit oh, yeah. that's right he was called vulgar boy for like the first whole entire they, scene you, you see pretty much the entire cast of characters within the first like 10 hours i think of the game is, is a safe estimate for the most part you'll see pretty much everyone you just don't yeah. know which i th at least when i played it and as far as i got it was cool to see that because like generally when you in an rpg you'll get a character or you'll see a character and they'll make a giant fucking deal about it right and this one is just kind of like you know, angry boy. Oh, okay. Well, I, who, okay. Anyways, you're like, I think that might be a person. I'm not really sure. It, you, that doesn't typically happen in games in general. They make a big deal. There are about still characters. characters. There are still characters that I call not by their actual name, but by the name they first like were presented with. Like, I so like, yeah. like, like, uh, uh, loud, angry student. Like, I'm not because I don't want to say the actual names, but like, I still call this person loud, angry student when they pop up on screen, even though I know I've been playing with a real name for, you know, hundred hours. Yeah. Because the first name that they give them is so great yeah. because it's just like descriptor noun, like adjective noun. It's, yeah. fucking, it's beautiful. They do a good job. Um, oh, <clears throat> another good thing to mention, these scenes, I didn't know were in the game where it was just straight anime. And I have to say, um, as somebody who has been diving into Crunchyroll recently, it was very cool to kind of like just every so often straight up put the controller down and be like, okay, let's all watch this as a community and like just hang out and, and you know, check it out. And those scenes sometimes are really cool and have some pretty good character uh, just so far, have had some pretty good like character discoveries and stuff. And yeah, I, I got to say, man, like it, it this is an, a, just like Xenoblade, this game is a great example on why... I feel that not only me, but I feel lots of gamers should try games outside of their comfort zone. Um, games that you would originally look at and be like, uh, this isn't really my thing. Try it anyway. Yeah. Try yeah. it anyway. That's that's like my mantra for hey, 2018. Man, that's why I'm oh, playing... that's not your thing? Okay, try it anyway. That's why oh, I'm that's, playing Subnautica like... right now. That's exactly why I'm Dude, playing Subnautica. Dude, I can't wait to talk about I can't <laughs> yeah. wait to talk about what you've been doing in Subnautica. It's a great example of what I'm talking about. But um 
this is this is the year of just just try it anyway. And uh, you know, like we've got Nino Cooney coming up later this year. I'm planning on trying that too. But God, I hope I, that's I gotta good. say, I am very happy I've played this game. Um, and and I and I I'm cautiously optimistic about the rest of this playthrough. I think really the next drop frames for me is going to be telling. Yeah, because the when, next when drop frame. What? Go ahead. When when do your afternoon streams get done? Usually, uh, normally my afternoon streams get done between five and six. Eastern, so I, I do a morning okay. stream from like eight to twelve, and then I do an. Oh, afternoon I'm moving stream. my schedule, guys. I'm going to move uh, to six p.m. Eastern time to start to continue my playthrough yeah, of Smart Persona Five. That's that, that. You should actually do that, or start an out start your normal. Well, time. here's the thing: you'll get follow all viewers to, without a doubt. It, it'll happen. It's important to mention now, Zeke. Before you put that in concrete. Um, I'm yeah, playing I'm Subnautica kidding. in the morning streams and Persona in the afternoon. But when I'm done with Subnautica, I'm going to move Persona to the morning streams. So I'll get with your secretary and we can talk about what day I'll switch over. And then we can we can yeah. plan our schedule. I'll get your secretary to talk to my secretary and then we can get all that worked out. So. OK, perfect. Sounds good. Sounds good. Zeke, you're <laughs> that being said. That I don't being know said, if you remember it, we signed that non-competition fucking <laughs> agreement. <laughs> Yeah, it's okay, true. Enemy. It's um, true. But no, the what, you guys, what you guys don't know is that we actually talked about this during the break, and uh, I felt it was it would be fun to give him shit about it. Absolutely. Well, what's funny <laughs> is yesterday was the first day I played Persona, and what's funny is I knew that my time slot was overlapping with Zeke, so I was actually really excited to raid Zeke. But then this guy. Had to have an RP thing and pull my buddy Zeke off his Persona Five stream. Oh, that's right. And we had so I swords. go to raid Zeke, yeah. and I'm like, "Who is this JP guy doing some Wait, kind of so, roleplay thing?" Hold on, did you and raid? Why Zeke on it? Oh, did you actually raid yesterday? Uh, I I don't know who I raided yesterday. I I I actually thought I think I raided a few people yesterday because I had actually said during the stream like we're gonna raid Zeke today because like okay. it was like his Persona. Because i so that was my big plan. In my mind, I'm trying to account why viewership was so high yesterday for Court of Swords. It might have been. We did. We actually added you to the raid thing. We we raided we raided you and there was another person playing Persona and I think there was a coalition streamer on. So that, I said like okay. go find what you want. Like yeah, because I, I didn't see like the co bombs in the chat probably because I wasn't reading chat because I was we were doing roleplay stuff. But that that might have been might have led to the viewership anyways. Um, yeah. You've also been getting good numbers on your roleplay lately, though. So just saying, it, yeah. that well, may have had nothing to do with what I was hey, doing when, <laughs> lately. Well, it's been going really well, and I don't know like <laughs> why that would be at all. Zeke, I, you can take some credit there, but I'm pretty sure it's because Critical Role busted a hundred thousand viewers last week on their show. It might have something to do with the overall viewership of D and D. Maybe a little <laughs> bit. <laughs> they peaked at ninety. 95,000 on Twitch. Uh, if you include everything, they were at like 130, I think is what it was. Were, were they doing... Uh, it was the launch RPM of their event? new campaign. They... It was the start of their new yeah. show, basically. They probably brought in a bunch of famous people too and everything. Nope, normal cast. Everything was normal. 100% normal. Oh, good on them. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Oh, man. Very cool. Very they, cool. They have a billboard right now in downtown LA that says, watch Critical Role on Twitch. It's, it's fucking weird, man. That whole thing That's is dope. just weird. That's awesome, man. Yeah, no, man. I... Like, Next step. I wish... I wish them like all the success in the world. I've never watched it, but just the fact that a hundred thousand people are watching a Dungeons and fucking Dragons yeah. stream like fifteen year old me <laughs> cream is fucking jeans. Yeah. Not that it wouldn't already happen because I'm fifteen. Yeah, sure. But yeah. <laughs> like seriously, like Dungeons and Dragons was an underground thing. It was something you didn't talk about to people. Not only not not your friends, especially not your parents, because your parents thought you were Satan worshiper yeah, for whatever reason. Worship, yeah. Because of that, you know, like everybody thought Dungeon Dragons was devil who worship Satan or whatever. Yeah. Um, and you didn't talk about it with your friends because embarrassing, especially if you were semi popular. If you weren't popular already, that's different. But if you were semi popular, it's like, what? How much nerd can I let out? And Dungeon Dragons was not a part of that <laughs> for the longest time. Yeah. <clears throat> It took shows like Community putting it on there and, and things on Twitch kind of blowing up D&D &D to make it a, a mainstream. Nerd. And also just nerd culture coming into the four-way in the past kind of 15 years. Anyways. Dude, I'm, I'm reliving this. Because they this saw story. how... Oh. <laughs> no, go ahead. Go ahead. It's it's because it can make money. They were like, oh, shit. So so nerds also have money? Yeah. Oh, great. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, then we'll... we'll like, advertisers are not 
so uh, uh, shy about throwing their fucking money in the ring too. Yeah. Well, you're reliving what, Co? The this scene from yesterday? Oh, I was gonna say I, I was like I was I was watching this clip and like reliving this. Like I I had no idea what was going on during this. Yeah. Zero clue. And uh, it, it's very rare that a game puts you in a position where you just have no idea what's going on. Zero percent. Like it was it was interesting. It was interesting. I hadn't been in that position in a while in a few games for sure. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Zeke, I feel like you kind of hit, at least from my knowledge, I don't know what happens towards the end of the game, but a pretty mm -hmm. critical climax in the story recently. Are you close? Do you? Does your chat say that you're close to finishing it? Are you getting there? I feel I feel like I'm probably like 20% away from the end or maybe 15. Yeah, I've been walking Somewhere around there. 70 ish hours? Are you my chat right now? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> No, no, Every I'm saying that. I'm saying that as somebody time who is, saved the game, that you is can awesome. See the number of hours played. <laughs> the fact, the fact that you can put that much time into the game is is, is a positive, impressive thing. <laughs> That's not a bad thing. That is awesome. No, I know. No, I know. I know. It's just, it's just, I, it's one of the, it's one of those things. Like, how do you like answering the same question over and over again? Um, 170, 180 hours. Like, oh my god. It's because, like I said, like I'm. Fucking voice acting every single line from every single person. Every has, everybody has their specific thing. Also, there are so many choices throughout the like a broadcast to make that you can torture yourself over for no reason, for no real like reason other than like it's it's like uh, um oh my god, if you ever played Magic the Gathering and tried to build a deck and you have like hundreds of cards and you're like Oh, maybe this would work with this. But then if I took this card out, then this card would do. And you just sit there like and I'm talking about like persona fusions and like when you get when you start like gathering up a ton of personas. This, this is the part I haven't gotten to yet. Like, I'm, no, but I'm, I'm saying like this is a core oh, mechanic of the game where it's it's just so many different choices that you have laid out before you. And you can sit there and just think about it and just think about it and think about it. And you and, <laughs> And that's what I do. That adds hours onto my playthrough. But I love it. I'm loving it. Yeah. And it's I'm funny actually really excited to go like, back and like watch parts of your playthrough when I'm done with it. Uh, yeah. I've had mul just like we have the JPNN and different news organizations <laughs> that go around. I've definitely had more than a few people drop into my stream during big parts of Zeke's Persona stream and be like, "Dude, you'll not believe what Zeke just did!" Or you get to Zeke's reaction to like a clip. And stuff like that. Like, look at this. Zeke checking out this this really big spoiler Persona Five, and I'm like, I'm not gonna check that out during my Persona stream. But thank you for for offering that to me. I you know, appreciate that. Maybe we should maybe we should push <laughs> the spoilers this. Spoilers are, are gonna happen, and you just gotta you just yeah. gotta oh, put on oh. a brave face. Small small little thing here. Um, this is the first game in months that I've had to put on sub mode. Really? Yeah. Like Damn. as as you guys know, I am. I think I think the right way to say what I feel about submode is against. I don't like submode. I don't right. like people having to pay to talk in my channel. As I think I speak for most of you here. No one wants that. Yeah. None of us really use submode here. But um, dude, it got to the point where when when one of my mods said, I just purged the same spoiler ten times in the last minute. Jeez. It's just kind of like, what do you what do you do at that point? What do you do? Um, I'll it tell was, you it, like Honestly, instead of sub only, emote only chat is it's fantastic. A, it's a great because yeah, it is. I loved it because I could get I could get yes or no answers out of my chat, or I could get emotion. It's like I it's, I it's I really had good. so much fun with the emote only chat because it's like it's like trying to communicate with an animal, like a dog. You get emotions. <laughs> no, no but like it, you, it works. Chat is like you get emotions. You get like yeses and nos. You get like. I don't like this. I like this, like that kind of stuff, without having <sighs> words attached to them. It's great, dude. I, emo we, it, it happened. What time is it? It happened thirty minutes ago. Something happened in chat, and one of my mods goes, "Hey, I just threw it into emote only mode for thirty seconds." I saw that everything yeah. purged, and now we're back to a normal chat. And so now I'm just thinking, emote only mode is actually fucking brilliant. I need to do this more <laughs> to just kind of like make everything. It, one, Dude, it pushes part, the chat. Oh. Yeah, this part's really fucking cool. Uh, this is pretty early on in the game, so whatever. Um, but yeah, it purges the chat. And two, like Zeke said, you can actually get thought from the chat pretty quickly. 
regardless of how yeah. many people are there. Um, so yeah. I think it's, I think we might start using it soon. With that, with that yay and nay, that green and red yay and nay. Yeah. That's so good. Like, if I do this, is this, does this happen? Nay, 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 nay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. How about what if I did this? And then, then, then like you get like yays and nays and it means like, we either I don't know or maybe and you kind of have to like puzzle that out <laughs> I'm a fan I'm a fan the other thing uh, we need to push this news network stuff down the line it should go naturally we need to each get emotes of <laughs> in, I don't know how Zeke's gonna do his though that one's gonna be tough CNN uh, oh shit you can't actually just straight up copy and you have red colors well you can't just steal the CNN logo co that might oh, be I, oh you watch me <laughs> 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 and I'll do JPNN, and then we'll do MSNB Zeke. I think that'll be MSNB Zeke. I like that. We got to work on that. Yeah, then okay. I'll yeah. I'll I'll uh I'll talk to Julia. We'll see yeah, I'll, I'll talk to my guys. We'll, <laughs> yeah, we'll definitely do that. Uh, but yeah, I'm glad you guys. I said this. I think I don't know. I said this already on the show before. It's so weird to me that you guys are both just into JRPGs after so long right now. Dude, I've always I'm been into still... JRPGs, man. I, like, from Final Fantasy VII on down, I love yeah, every one of them. Those aren't JRPGs. Those are Final Fantasies. I... No, no. Xenoblade <laughs> was a JRPG. Okay. Xenoblade yes. was the death. Like, oh, my God. Especially towards the end. But I got I to gotta admit, man, like, I didn't think that I, I didn't think I would finish Xenoblade. I didn't think I'd finish Xenoblade by my third stream of it. But... Sure enough, man, there's, there is a, a very, like if even for people like me that aren't normally hugely into anime, if you look deep enough into it, there are definitely tangents and similarities that you can grab onto and make it an extremely awesome, meaningful experience. Yeah. Um, even if it's just looking at like personal relationships between characters and, and drawing tangents with that. Um, but especially towards the end of Xenoblade, like uh, just to talk about that a little bit, cause JP, you finished it, right? Yes, I did. Uh, that's okay. so when I was when I was putting that title thing up here, it's because I was gonna. I don't have a spoiler button. I was just gonna put the words spoiler tag so we could talk about it. <laughs> and uh, drop frame spoilers. You yeah, just put it right under a drop spoiler frame. tag. Drop. This, <laughs> when this goes away, we'll stop spoiling the end of Xenoblade Chronicles. Let's talk about it because I do have some thoughts. Go ahead. Okay. First of all, before we do this, Zeke, do you ever yeah. plan on playing Xenoblade Chronicles too? No. Okay. Okay. Just want to make sure that's totally clear. Okay. So spoilers. Um, the end of Xenoblade Chronicles 2 threw me on a loop, dude. I, I, I thought about one thing that was coming through. It ended up being a little bit different. Um, came back on path a little bit towards the end. But, dude, I have to admit, like, the, uh, I, it really wishes this is going to be a big spoiler for anyone. That These are spoilers this. of the end of the game. Yeah, I wanna, so I wanna be say careful. This. Here we go. Okay. <laughs> yep. I was really surprised after looking into it after the end how much the tangents between Xenoblade 1 were. It made me wish that I played that game first. Yes. Because I have to admit, it's a really, really unique and interesting connection that they make between the two. I actually ended up reading about it like okay, for a good, 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 good 45 minutes or an hour yeah. after I was done with it. And I was just like, dude, there is so much depth between these two connections. It was, it was very impressive well even when you walk impressive. in the room and you kind of see that half of his body is missing if you had played xenoblade one you'll know right away what that other half Chat of the body erupted is erupted yeah. when that happened they erupted they were like oh my god it's that guy like it's him it's that guy and i was yeah. just like oh, i don't know what you're talking about but that's really cool <laughs> it also goes yeah. super jrpg like fucking different galaxy it's kind of weird but yeah, also, also I a dude to... came back like and it was like fan service. Like, remember that guy? Mm, He's here well, now. no, no, no. Now, really, yeah. This is where it gets interesting, Zeke. And, and again, this is super heavy spoiler territory. But basically what happens is for the Xenoblade Chronicles 2 world, this guy opened up a portal between dimensions. <laughs> and in Xenoblade Stay Chronicles with us now. 2, <laughs> you live in that world. So you're uh -huh. in the world with the guy who broke this dimensional gateway and you're living in his world. And he actually recreated the world and you're one of the people he recreated. Super crazy. But here's where it gets nuts. When they opened that barrier between <clears throat> dimensions, the other half of that guy went through the barrier and the other half of him is the end boss of Xenoblade uh -huh. 1. And what's even crazier 
it's like the is evil you find guy. out at the end of Xenoblade 2 that Xenoblade 1 was happening at the same time. And as you're fighting the boss at the end of Xenoblade 1 to kill him, you are killing the nice guy at the end of Xenoblade 2 who doesn't even know what his other half is doing in the other dimension because he's split down the middle. Yep. So it's this crazy connective tissue between the two worlds where it's like this guy has a cognitive understanding about what's happening, but he has no control over it. And he knows he's going to die, but he but at the same time, he's sustaining that world. So and that ties in. And again, I'm, I'm barely scratching the surface. There's here, a lot. But here, this yeah. all ties into like the fact that he's supporting and created the Xenoblade Chronicles 2 world. He's in this like space station that is basically overseeing everything working and he's about to die so everything's about to crumble and that leads to all this other end game stuff i mean it, it was the end of the game was larger than i ever could have anticipated um and what's even crazier is is i'm kind of sad that i didn't play xenoblade one because apparently those people that played xenoblade one have a even deeper understanding about well, how this guy functions and acts and you know so there, there's also and at the end of the game you hear a voice from like the the ethereal bullshit attached to this guy from the other side. And it's actually the main character from the first game. So like the second you heard that voice, I was like, holy shit, it's actually, it's Shulk. Like that's, that's really And cool. more it's importantly, cool when you hear that voice, that locks in the parallel timeline timelines, yeah. you know exactly what's been happening in each world at that time. And you know exactly where they lined up. And it's, it's, I have to admit the the end of Xenoblade Chronicles two gave me a slight twinge of the end of Bioshock Infinite, mm. where they're starting to kind of like connect all the different worlds into a global narrative. Yeah. I felt that at the end of Xenoblade Chronicles 2. I never expected that from it. That was like, that was such this kind of surprising, like, holy shit, they're doing this. Like it, it was, it really made the end pretty, pretty cool. And this is coming from someone who didn't even play the first one. And from what I understood in chat, people that played the first one, like they've been seeing these little tiny tangents throughout a lot of the game and that was like a cumulative event for them so it was the 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 one the tldr of all of this is it was a very impressive ending yeah and I uh, and i have to admit i'm really glad i played through it and uh, if they make a xenoblade chronicles 3 i'll be one of the first people to stream it like i that was that was cool that was cool which uh did There's you always choose lighthouse <laughs> did you choose mithra or pyra by the way choose when you go, uh, when you fall to the underworld or whatever, and you get to choose Mithra or Pyra, who oh, did you choose? I chose Pyra. Okay, I chose Mithra. No, 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 no. Excuse me, excuse me. I think I chose Mithra because of the crit stuff. So when I, that, I honestly don't remember. I don't remember. It was at yeah. the end of the game. Who spoke? Which which of the two chicks spoke at the very last scene? Was it Mithra or Pyra for you? Well, I got both of them. No, they were both there, but which one said the words, mouthed the words, it did the anime thing where they mouth words but don't actually have the audio line. You oh, remember? you know what? I think it was Mithra. Okay. Cause I but think then again, it's it's really interesting because if you if you zoom in on their mouth, you can actually you can actually see the Japanese translation. And if you put your ear very close to the speakers, you can hear them go, <laughs> Don't forget me. <laughs> Pretty crazy. It's, if, it's uh, a little known fact. I think. I never actually uh confirm this but i think depending on who you choose there is the person that mouths the words it does the oh. anime thing that's why i was asking i was trying to confirm it i don't know if that's here's the thing though i'm i'm a little confused because like okay here and 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 there, there was a clip from this um at the end of my game i thought it was a happy ending at first i thought it was rex and he had been dealing with pyra and mithra and you know he had been getting to know these this this one girl that has two different directions and everything's cool there and then it got to the end of the game and it's like, oh, here's Mithra and Pyra. Right. And I was like, oh, it's it looks like a happy ending. But actually, this is one of the worst endings yeah. in video <laughs> history. Because you see what's happened <laughs> is now he has two girls yeah. and one of them is going to be very jealous of the other. Yep. And you see the way that this works is this is called a no win situation because everyone's a loser. Yeah. yeah. And then so you have really, Mia there. Like a happy ending yeah. at the beginning. But it's really not. You've it's also it's got... really the rest of Rex's life is just a complete cacophony of one yelling at the other, and it's just a mess. 
You've also got uh, Nia there, who's like this weird person that loves Rex, but that's oh, never I talked know, about. Right? Nia. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. felt so bad during her little alternate reality thing where she's yeah. like, I've been here the whole time. I'm like, I know, but clearly I have no interest in you. Yeah. It's like, what are you, what are you saying yeah, it's about It's fucking that? weird. It's a weird game. Oh, but it was bad. Anyways, I'm going to take a spoiler tag off. Uh, okay. Overall, I think we both enjoyed it. I, I enjoyed it. I'm glad I finished it. For sure. Oh, for sure. For sure. Uh, oh, for sure. what'd you think of the last boss? I hated the last boss. What level last were boss? you when you approached the boss? The big fucking thing that has the one shot kill? Oh, I one shot it. Okay. What level were you? No. Did I? 60 something. I think I, think I, um, I, I was think low I, level. I might have one shot it, but I got lucky. Okay. I think I got really lucky. Um, I, I think I, uh, people in chat told me that I triggered my ultimate combo with four orbs. Like apparently uh, right one before shot he was about to do that. So I think I missed the like party one shot. Yeah. But that being said, um, I, I did almost die during it. I, yeah. I think I had two people dead at one point. And uh, I also had a lot of weirdness between the phases because um, it's a two phase fight and there's a cut scene between yes. it. So I saved up like three orbs and the phase happened and erased the orbs and that totally threw off my jive and I had people die and it was kind of a mess. But um, uh, I was level 69. There we go as my chat is reminding me. Oh, okay. You're much chat. higher level. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, and also um, I did like the, the fight from the beginning was four orbs ultimate. Like that was my 100% goal. Gotcha. And, uh, and even doing that, apparently I triggered the ultimate like seconds before the big party one shot attacks. So. Nice. Yeah, I, I the short TLDR I got lucky. <laughs> well, you're, the yeah. higher level probably helps as well. You probably wouldn't have gotten one shot. I went in there at sixty four, oh, I think, or sixty five, and I, I got one shot multiple times. I was I was pretty low oh, level. Wow. Yeah, I also got apparently super lucky with the the. Uh, now, I don't know if you had problems with this, but one of my mods, his name uh, uh, Sayori, he's actually my server mod. He he had a lot of trouble with the 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 one on ones where it's Rex versus. Yeah, everyone person. was like, "This is the worst part of the game." I didn't have that. Big yeah. Of as soon as I put well, in a healer and a tank, do, yeah. If you if you really grind in the game and you you get really good blades on your alternate and you level them up and stuff, you can make them so powerful that they're actually better than Rex. Uh, so like I actually looked on the Reddit and there was a guy that had tried Morag thirty five times. Jesus, and he could not beat his Morag. But that's because he had like he had been focusing on making his Morag absolutely amazing. And then when you had to fight him, it's like. Well, what do I do? Yeah. <laughs> like I, I use much better than my character. So yeah, that was uh that was interesting. Anyway. Yeah. Anyways, I'm gonna take spoiler tag off. Uh, Sounds good. we enjoyed the game. Uh welcome back everyone who had us muted. Uh we're a little bit over. We could talk about we'll have time next week, which is probably fine because I I think I'm only like eight hours into Subnautica. Uh but we can, we can talk about Subnautica next week if you want to. I have a lot to talk about with Subnautica. So, and, and here's the thing. Yeah. The game actually doesn't release until the 23rd. Sure. So yep. if we want to save it for next week, we could actually talk about the ending, which we can't show yet because it's embargo. I don't know if I'll so get maybe, to it, to be honest. There, maybe that would be better. There's so much fucking game in there. It, it feels Dude, like. there is so much game in Subnautica. Let, let me, here's what we'll say about Subnautica this week. Do you own Subnautica? Oh, you don't? Go buy it. Well, hold on, hold on. Do you own Subnautica? You don't. Do you have Thalassophobia? You do. Don't buy Subnautica. <laughs> because that, that, that game needs to be sold as a horror game. I'm sorry. You try to work that fucking word in every goddamn It's time because it's what it is. It's, it's, it's the fucking clinical thing of what it is being underwater. It's the fear of being is underwater. Is it in VR yet? It has VR, yes, but not it yet. It's in VR. Um, here's the thing. I will say this. I don't have the phobia that JP is talking about. There are certainly times this game is one of the few games that has made my palms sweat. Yeah. There has been times when I have been deep enough. I've not been able to understand what way is up. There are enemies all around me and crazy sounds happening. I'm low on energy, food and water. I have no idea where I'm supposed to go. And I will literally realize like, holy shit, my palms are sweating. Like I, I will get so nervous in this game at times. It um, happens, man. But I mean, it's it's a real thing, man. And what and it's a testament to the game. I mean, this game has come so far since early access. Um, and and I actually played this game the day it was available on Steam. And I can tell you right now, the game that was available on Steam in this game that I've been playing, two completely different games. I mean, you can you can feel the passion of the developers in this product, and it is it is one of the better early access games available right now by far. 
yeah. um, like early access to completed games. There's very few games that have made it through like the whole process. Another one being like The Forest, for example, um, and right. you know Divinity and those types of games. But it's 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 a shining example about how to do early access to full version, right? And for those who don't know, by the way, this game actually fully releases on the 23rd. And right now, if you're a streamer, you can get press access, which allows you full access to the game with the only caveat that they don't want you to show the very final scene. Um, and they're actually, they've actually been pretty public about this. Um, what you can do <laughs> yeah. is you can solve all the stuff in the game world and eventually build a rocket. And then something happens with the rocket that nobody knows about. And that's the thing that streamers can't show. But they've been very cool. They've said everything before that, you know, we'll give you a press access. You can do that. And by the way, streamers, uh, look up Damn Jess on Twitter. Yes. She will help you out. That's she will set you me, up yeah. and she will get you access. So something to check out if you're a streamer. Uh, she's been super helpful. So has Charlie and many of the Subnautica devs have been plugged into Twitch and it's been pretty amazing and awesome. But I got to say, man, like this, I have done, this is, I'm now on my third full playthrough of Subnautica. This playthrough has lasted over 30 hours, and I'm having just as much fun, if not more fun, than I have in my last two 60-plus hour Subnautica playthroughs. It's an incredible game, man. There's very I didn't realize like you had played it before. That, that makes sense mm -hmm. now. Because for me, like, I didn't even know what this game was until I was watching you play, and I was like, huh, that game looks kind of You know fun. what, JP? I'm going to be honest here. I heard your chat was giving you bad advice. Oh, really? What'd they say? I heard your... One of the first things I do in this game is establish a base. Yeah, they were saying don't build the a base. First thing, I know that I don't I don't know which one of you jerks was saying that. <laughs> one of the first things I do, you get a habitat creation tool, you put down a multi-purpose habitat, you put a hatch on it, and dude, that is the start of your actual playthrough. Okay. Then you can put in lockers, then you can put in a fabricator. Hey, uh, no, you, come on, like, stop. <laughs> God damn it. What what? I want to discover all this stuff. This is a game oh, that I okay. actually plan on really playing a lot of. Oh, especially oh okay. If it's okay. Well, no, no, no. Let, let me, yeah. Now, Zeke, let me let me tell you this because it's actually good for new players to know. So, yeah. what happens is when you start the game, there's a life pod, and I have seen streamers okay. that never go out of the life pod. The life pod has like a very tiny storage, and it has a thing that you can fabricate things out of, and that's it. But here's the thing: the beautiful part of this game is the fact that you have the freedom and creativity to make your own base. And when you make your own base, you can put in all the storage you want and all the cool new stuff and all this great, th all these great things. And you want to get your base down pretty much as soon as possible because then you can really start like digging into the meat yeah. of, you know, having a place to throw all your titanium that you find and get all this stuff. So what I heard is, and, and, and I completely understand this, is, is JP, apparently you didn't make a base until like a while into the game. It was and about then, five or six hours, yeah. I, I yes, and you were having yeah. problems with storage and all sorts of stuff. And that's because I, I really feel like the game wants you to make the base as soon as you can. Also, another very, very important thing, very important thing. The first thing you do after making a base is you take one piece of titanium and one piece of copper and you drop a beacon outside of it. Yeah. And a beacon will put a big waypoint on your map yeah. that shows you where your base is no matter where you are. If you have a multi-purpose habitat with a hatch on it and a beacon outside of it, that is the basic foundation of an extremely successful Subnautica playthrough. Yep. So for any new players, do it. Like that. that is it's what you want to do. Yep. It's still, I, I don't think I'm afraid. Uh, here, Zeke, this is for you. I don't think I'm afraid of like the ocean or whatever you want to call that. Uh, mm. <laughs> but there are definite moments where I'm and I think maybe chat is triggering it more than the game is where I'm just swimming over open water and I kind of look down I can't see the bottom of the ocean floor and everyone in the chat's like oh god is it gonna is he is it gonna happen is he gonna is it gonna see it is, oh god I think I heard did you hear that I think I heard it and I'm just like I'm just gonna turn around now I'm gonna go back to my base <laughs> so, <laughs> so it hasn't happened yet I know what's gonna happen because I know exactly what it is because everyone always joins the chat and says, hey, has this happened yet? And everyone in chat says, no, we're all still waiting for it. <laughs> oh, and by the way, for anyone in chat that was thinking I was spoiling just then, dude, I have literally told you step one of a 59-step process. Like, I, yeah, that is yeah, yeah. zero spoiler. Like, there's so much more that we could talk about in terms of how to do your base, what to put in your base, what to do, the end game. Like, this, I have. if you think I just spoiled, you have not played Subnautica. Right. 
There, that is all I'm going to say. I, I, that <laughs> is nothing compared to the end game. I, and by the way, the way that I play isn't the way that you have to play to get as far as I have. Like that's, that's one of the another another beautiful thing about this game is that you can pretty much play it however you want. I have seen people that have gotten to the end of the game without ever building a base. I mean, granted, that's you know how they wanted to play, and it it's was definitely, tough. in my opinion, a little bit like... harder. But you can certainly do it if you want to. Absolutely, you can skip the whole base building thing if you want to. So you know, something to keep in mind. Something to keep in mind. I think I'm gonna play it immediately after the the show today. I think what I want to do is just go as deep as I can and just get rid of the fear <laughs> of going deep because I it it gets pitch black. You can't see anything, and then the bioluminescence shit starts happening, and you're just like, ah, oh, dude, God. Yeah. just just wait until the first time you're 1200 meters under the ocean you just spotted your first first leviathan you're literally thousands of meters from your base yeah you're low on food you're low on water in your one prawn that you had all your resources spent to build and you're just staring at the leviathan as it comes to you yeah it's gotta be as terrifying. it's looking down and bearing on you that is that is a that is not a good feeling yeah <laughs> yep so we'll see. Woo! I'm enjoying it, though. I, oh, I didn't man. expect to. Uh, it'll tide me over to Monster Hunter. That's for sure. I'm kind of... I said last week I was done with Path of Exile. I played more Path of Exile. I started a new character in Path of Exile. And last night, it might have just been because I was fucking exhausted. But I ended... I st I logged out. I, just, I don't want to sit here and like run a spreadsheet right now on this character. I, th I think... I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to go back. <laughs> I haven't decided yet. Mm. I might be good. But I might also jump back in tonight. I don't know. We'll see. I, you dude, said that last dude, time. I did say that last this, time. This game, dude, yeah. this game not only has literal tiers of technology, but the story is actually really interesting. I was and, not, and if there's anything I to spoil, it would be the story. And that's where I'm not going to even touch. But there is an actual story in the game. Yeah. You can uncover previous, like, different... Di just don't even say anything. Again, just don't even say anything. Yeah, I would just. Say, there's there's a lot. There's a yeah. lot to this game involving story. Yeah, and uh, and just that alone is a journey. That so that happened. Yeah. I did not know that it had that, and I stumbled <laughs> upon it, and it started happening in front of me, and I'm just like, what the fuck? I thought this was just a survival game. I had no idea that it had this as well, uh, and that was really cool. And then I got lost on an island. Pro tip. Stay in the fucking water. The game's called Subnautica. Don't go on fucking land. It's pointless. It's a goddamn waste of time. You'll get lost. It has really bad level design on land. It's bad. Don't do it. <laughs> I walked around uh, for 45 up, minutes. <laughs> the land is really important. Make sure you look everywhere, and there's some very important things on it. But I walked around for like... Everything else he said is, is accurate. I swear to God, it was 45 fucking minutes of me just doing this. Just fucking circle it around, and then circle it back around this way. And then come back. <laughs> oh, hey, it's sucked, great man. time to mention, by the way, the <laughs> Pathfinder tool lets you put down up to 20 different waypoints so you know exactly where you've been and where yeah. you're going. Yeah. So a very good tool that I also didn't notice until 30 hours in, but that's yeah. been added in recently, um, can be very helpful in times like that. I'm sure it can, because that island can fucking suck a dick. <laughs> I was, I ended my stream, was like, I'm fucking done. I'm done. I'm going to go figure it out on my own. I'm out of here. Oh. The JPNN came into my channel and told me that you rage quit. And then it and then it took a few other people to be like, he didn't actually rage yeah. quit. He just got lost and had to go. Here's the <laughs> so that, that like, happens a lot yeah. on my channel where people think I'm actually raging, but I'm just not. And then when I actually rage, they're just like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> so that happens a lot for sure. Uh, we're overdue though. We'll talk more Subnautica next week. Uh, Zeke, I'm interested to see what else you've been playing. As far as I know, it's mostly percent. Did you do an indie, uh, an indie Sunday, Monday thing? No, no. Uh, uh, just briefly, um, uh, after I'm done with persona, yeah, I am going to do, uh, an indie week. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to do just a full, like five days of nothing but indie games, uh, nice. every day. I'm going to check out some, some ones that I've been meaning to check out for a while. Like Gora Goa is probably first on the list. I don't know it was a beautiful is. thing. Uh, it's a beautiful, it's, 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 I interviewed the guy oh. and it's kind of like a, um, hand-drawn puzzle picture in picture, like, like a mosaic puzzle, like kind of like, um, it's perspective as well. Huh. It looks really, really cool. Um, but that's first on my list and I've got a whole like discord, like, uh, um, 
channel just for like game suggestions. So I'm I'm gonna look through that awesome. and uh, fill up a whole week of of nothing but indie indie games for five days or whatever. Um, after Persona is done, and I'm hoping I can get it done before next drop frames. Yeah, it seems like you're pretty close. <laughs> there was a oh fuck, I'll have to find this game. There's a game that I wanted you to try out that seemed very uh, up your alley indie wise. I'll, I'll find the link later and, and tell you about it or talk about it next week because uh, we're oh, overdue. Put it right up my alley, buddy. Yep. Let's uh, let's do some shout outs and uh, we'll call it a show. Zeke, why don't you start us off? I'll try to find that game in the meantime. Do some shout outs. Yo, everybody, Zeke the third here. Want to give a big shout out to um, uh, <laughs> Simler. Simler, Jesus Christ! <laughs> I wanted to say on fire, but <laughs> no, that's his on he fire. Sports no, it's, it's, no, it's on fire Simler. I know that, but I wanted to call him on fire oh. for whatever reason. Uh, but yeah, huge shout out to Simler for for uh, giving us all that info on the Overwatch League and back in the day of CS:GO and all that kind of stuff. Very entertaining and very very informative. Uh, also, I want to thank JP and Co. Always for being awesome co-hosts. Uh, I broadcast at noon Pacific usually every day, um, besides Tuesdays and Wednesdays because I do Dungeons and Dragons and draw frames. Um, but uh, follow me on Twitch, Twitter, and YouTube, all the same slash Ezekiel underscore III or at Ezekiel underscore III. Uh, give me, I don't know, what? Give me an hour ish, oh. and then we'll, we'll I'll fire up some more Persona tonight because I'm I'm feeling like I want to. Keep going. So you guys want some more Persona 5 action tonight? Uh, give me like an hour and then we'll get it. We'll get it going. Nice. Uh, that's all I got. Nice. Uh, name of the game, Remnants mm. of Nizith. N-A-E-Z-I-T-H. I th- I'll, I'll send it to you on uh, Skype right now. There's Hold on. I got, my, I got my Steam up right now. I can, I can look it up. Yeah. No, I just sent you the Steam link for Remnants it. of Nizith. Okay. Nazith or Nizith, yeah. It's it launches February. Oh, you can't even buy right now. It launches February sixth, so never mind. Oh, look at this, dude. Yeah, it looks kind of. It's like Terraria plus Metroid. Yeah, and there's also level creation. So, I don't know. Okay, I saw that and I figured you you might like it. Uh, Co, do some shoutouts. Okay. (laughs) Hi everyone. My name is Co. Big thank you to Semler. It is always awesome having people on that are just on completely different wavelengths as us here on the channel, just in completely different worlds. And they're basically at the top of those worlds. So it was great having Semler on. Big thanks as always to Zeke and JP as well. My name is Co. Hello. Uh, You can find me every day at 8 a.m. EST. Uh, These days, or at least the next few days, we're going to be playing some Nautica in the morning and Persona 5 in the afternoons. We also have a Dark Souls 3 speed run coming up. We've got Monster Hunter at the end of the month, all sorts of fun things. And then, of course, every Wednesday at 1 p.m., you will see me here on Drop Frames. So anyway, as always, thank you for watching. Really do appreciate your time. And uh, see you next week if I don't see you on my channel. Awesome stuff. Uh, I will be streaming immediately following the show. We're going to jump into some some Nautica for a little while. I'm at that point where I just got to go deeper. So I'm just, it's probably going to be a scary broadcast, (laughs) at least for me. Uh, Next week, we do have a potential guest, but I'm not cleared to say who it is yet uh, because it's not 100% set in stone. So I'll probably announce that on like Friday or so. And then I think in uh, middle or what was the date? I think it's the 14th. I think it's Valentine's Day. We'll have a date with Shroud on the show. I think he's going to come in on uh, February 14th. So that'll be fun. Um, and we'll have guests in between there. But Shroud is actually going to come on today in the second half of the show. And I'm kind of glad he didn't because we stayed with Simler and talked so long. Low JP's arm placement that whole time. Oh, yeah. Like this. Just like that. Yep. <laughs> yeah. It, there's a point where it cuts off where it looks great. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, uh, yeah, Shadow will be coming on, I think, on the 14th. I'll have confirmation of that in a, in a couple of days. Um, but, yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching. Huge shout-out once again to Simler. He'll be uh, on the Overwatch League tomorrow broadcasting uh, if you want to watch that. It's also on tonight at uh, 7 o'clock Eastern. So that's it. We'll see you next time. Have a good week. We'll see you next week for more Drop Frames. Bye-bye.